I'm Nathan Jeffers, and today I'm going to show you the simplest way to create titles in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. So I've got some footage here that needs a lower third, and so I'm going to switch over to the graphics workspace in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you don't see this graphics workspace, you can go up to Windows, Workspaces, and Graphics should be there. Select that, and you'll switch over. That's brought up our Essential Graphics panel, which will allow us to control and modify our text. To add text to the video, all we're going to do is select the Type tool and click on the Program Monitor where we want that text to appear. So now I'm going to go and type my text. Once I'm done typing my text, you can see a couple different things have happened. A new layer has been added to my timeline that's a graphics layer. A graphics layer can hold lots of different text and titles, almost like a Photoshop layer inside of your video. The other thing that's happened is the Essential Graphics panel has switched over to the Edit mode, and it's added a layer here for text. I can see the preview of the text, and then a bunch of different controls and options for modifying the position and the look and appearance of my text. So I'm going to switch back over to the Selection tool and move that text down slightly. When I'm creating a lower third, I'm thinking about adding some contrast to the fonts that I use to make it visually appealing. So I'm going to add some visual contrast between their names and their title. So let's do that by double clicking on the layer. That's going to switch me over to my title editor. I'm going to select just their names and let's shrink their font size down to about 80. And then I'm going to double click and select their title. And let's switch this font. Let's leave it in Helvetica New. But instead of Condensed Bold, I'm going to try Light. And then I'm going to make that a little bit smaller, let's say 60. I'm going to click and drag on my leading here. And this will allow me to correct the spacing, uh, the vertical spacing between the text. So that's looking pretty good to me. Um, I might create a little bit more contrast by making this text all caps. Um, so if you double click that, there is an option here to switch that selected text to all caps. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Maybe add a little bit more leading room there. And your options may look a little bit different, but you can set the fonts to whatever you want them to be. I'm just creating some visual interest here for, for the viewer. Then there's lots of other things that you can do with the appearance. You can adjust the fill. You can add a stroke. Maybe you want to have a uh, black outline around the text. And all I'm doing is clicking and dragging on each of these number entry points here. These become virtual sliders, basically, if you click and drag left and right. And Or you can maybe add a background to the text here and change the color, even a shadow. Then you can add multiple strokes, you can mask the text. There's lots of different things that you can do here, but I'm going to leave this pretty much um, as I found it and just add a shape behind the text to add some contrast so that you can the text is more readable. Now if you notice on all these tools in the toolbar here, some of them have a little triangle on the bottom right hand corner, that means that there's actually more tools underneath that tool that you can select. So what I'm going to do is click and hold and use this rectangle tool to create a just simple rectangle for our use here. So let's click and drag out on the program monitor. Now when I create that rectangle, you'll notice that it's created a shape layer inside of that graphics layer. We have a single graphics layer now that contains text and a shape. And it can contain multiple shapes and multiple images as well as other kinds of text. So I'm going to switch back to my selection tool and then move my shape layer underneath my text so that it's in the right order on the monitor. Now I'm going to move that using the selection tool. I'm moving that shape layer over until this is more balanced. One of the cool things that you could do in the Essential Graphics panel is if you select multiple objects, you can automatically have them align to one another. So if I move this out of alignment 
and then I select both of those objects, I can align those either to the vertical or horizontal center of the composition, or I can align them vertically to each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And now they're vertically aligned to each other. There's a little bit of space in the bottom, so I'm gonna move this one down a little bit now. Now that they're vertically aligned to each other, what I'm gonna do is change the shape color of this background shape. So I'm going to click on the color for fill and then just change this to a dark black. What I'm also going to do is change the opacity by coming up here to my opacity controls and then let's set this to about 90 percent so we get kind of a nice opaque, slightly opaque background here for our, for our lower third. Then what I can also do is select both of these layers and then move them down so I get it right to the right point where I want it. Okay, so now I have my lower third. We have some text. We have a background. One of the things you want to note when you're creating titles is title safe and action safe areas. So in the bottom of the program monitor, you might see this button that's called Safe Margins. If you don't see it, click on the plus button, and then you'll click and drag your safe margins into your uh, toolbar here on the bottom. So if you click on that, it's going to show you title safe and action safe margins. The middle is title safe, the outer line is action safe. These are actually outdated safe margins. You really should be looking for the outermost line. That's where I usually kind of put my text. This just gives me a helpful guide in terms of placing my objects. So I'm going to select both of these and then move it down so it's just inside that outer line. So if I turn that off, that's a nice placement, I think, um, and it's not going to be cut off um, on most people's monitors. Now that I've placed my text exactly where I want it to be, I'm going to retime it and add a quick transition in the timeline. So what I'm going to do is m go ahead and move this around using my selection tool exactly where I want it to show up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play using the spacebar. And right now you can see that it just pops on abruptly there and pops off abruptly. So what I'm going to do is add a dissolve, a quick dissolve. I'm going to go over to my effects library here and then go scroll down to video transitions, dissolve, and then click and drag across dissolve to the beginning and the end of my clip. The easy way to do that, I'm just hitting the, uh, Command Z for undo, is select that and then click on Shift D for default transition and that will add a cross dissolve to the beginning and end of that clip. So now when I go back and hit play, it's going to have a nice fade and then a nice fade off. So now I've created my lower third. Just to repeat, we've added a name and title using our type tool. We added a shape using the rectangle tool and we've modified those, both of those, in the essential graphics panel We've adjusted the spacing and alignment using the align and transform controls. We've adjusted some font attributes here in the text controls, and then modified some small appearance options down here in the appearance part of the essential graphics panel. Now, as a reminder, all of these things are created and contained in a single layer. So these can be copied and moved around wherever you want them to be in your timeline and the shape and the text will come together with this single graphics layer. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a main title for this piece. Um, we're just going to use it as an example. I didn't have one for this particular uh, piece that I edited, but let's say you're creating a promotional video where you want some titles or you're creating a, a film or episode of a TV show, you want some main titles in there. Um, you're going to use the exact same tools that we went over in the lower thirds lesson. So let's select our type tool, and I'm going to click in the middle of the screen, and I'm going to type out Scott Pilgrim Picture Show. 
And then if I press Command A to select all my text, I'm going to go ahead and switch this over to Helvetica New Bold and set it to all caps. And let's raise up the size of this text and make it centered. One of the cool things about the Essential Graphics panel is these align and transform controls. So I'm going to click on vertical center and horizontal center. And what that's going to do is align this text layer to the vertical and horizontal center of my sequence size. So now what I'm going to do is add some visual contrast like I was doing earlier. Um, I usually like to do that in terms of font weight, but you can do that using color. You can do that using shapes and other things like that. Um, for now, I'm just going to turn this thin. And let's go ahead and shrink down that text size. Let's add some spacing in between the letters by increasing the tracking size here. Let's say about there and then increase the font size back up to make it match the width of the text above. That's looking pretty good. I might shrink that down a little bit more. Let's turn on that safe, those safe margins. You can see that when I have a layer that has multiple text attributes inside of it, some of these options are now grayed out. And if I were to change this, it would switch all of the text within that layer. So I'm going to hit undo. What you're going to have to do is double click inside that layer and select just the text that you want to modify so that you can change it. So let's go ahead and fit this top text inside the middle guide here. So I'm going to make sure that's center aligned and I'm going to shrink that down just so it fits inside the center line. And then do the same thing for the one below until we get it nice and even. So now that I've modified this text exactly how I want it, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the background just so that that text pops. One of the things that I love to do in Premiere and in Photoshop for that matter is add a tint um, to the background that has kind of a nice gradient color to it. So I'm going to search for tint in the effects panel and under color correction we see this tint option. I'm going to click and add it to my footage and it turns black and white and what that's doing is it's mapping the black levels to black and mapping white all the way to white. So what we can do is select this black and maybe turn it into a dark blue and then I'm going to select the white and turn that into a slightly lighter blue but kind of a mid blue here. And then what we can see that that does is it creates a color tint over the top of our image and it allows the text to really pop. So I can kind of mess around with the specific colors that I use here to get different looks. So if I brought this up to a little bit brighter blue I can still see the footage a little bit, but the text still pops. Let's turn off our safe margins here. So I think that's looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to set this exactly the same length as the clip and add a fade, just like my lower third. And I can see that that fades on and fades off. Okay, so there you have it. We have some nice, big, bold main titles with a contrasting background that we've added. And that's all happening in a single layer in the graphics panel on a single text layer. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.